times I was talking about the Geula and the redemption of Am Israel. And I was uh, trying to bring that huge light into words that will be simple enough for every person to understand. And I think that <coughs> Hashem Ibarach helped me finally and, uh, to visualize, to see myself in a way that now I can hopefully express it to you that you will be able to understand and to sense and to get some kind of understanding about how it's really going to happen. <coughs> because words can fly in the air, can get into one ear and to fly to the other very fast. But the truth, the way I met Nikarin, words of truth, they leave a mark, they leave a sign. So, hopefully, that uh, I'm going through enough um, to be clean enough to be that vessel for you to to express the will of Hashem for you to understand because all of it is really just for you to understand and to know that Hashem is with us and He's ready to come. So in the beginning I'll explain to you one small thing about Hashem, <coughs> and then I'll explain to you how the redemption will come, how the Gibla will come. So, everyone knows how we are experiencing the world. Everyone got his eyes, got his nose, got his ears, got his senses, and he's got his awareness to the environment and also to his heart and to his emotions and we're using let's say something like between three to seven percent of our real abilities our subconscious you call it tatmuda is catching much much more than our awareness but we are aware to something like between three to five seven percent of, of what that really happens around us but really, what that happens is 100%. So, for an example, now here we're sitting in a Bet Midrash, in a synagogue, Bet Knesset. So, we can see the people that are here, we're experiencing the tables, the walls, the, 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 the floor, the, the ceilings, the lamps, the light, the food, whatever. And also our thoughts. But we're not aware to every detail, it means how many fibers, how many strings there are in every shirt of every person, in every part of every particle of the creation. What are the particles that are building and containing it? And it goes down to atoms and, and even deeper than atoms. The energy and secret of, of our being. And, and really all of that information is really happening on real time in every part of the creation, just you can experience more and more. If you're going to bring a microscope, so you're going to see more. If you're going to put your mind into it, or you're going to just take a real good look, into, you're going to experience more. So every one of us, we're experiencing certain amount of information on our um, on on the outside world that is surrounding every one of us. And also, we're experiencing our inside in a way that is pretty similar to the outside. You know about your thoughts, you know about your emotions, your feelings, but you're not aware to 100% of what did you go through inside. Just two parts. But Hashem Ibarach, he is in trouble. Why he is in trouble? Because he is spending 100% of the time because he's beyond time, so he's inside the time, experiencing every single 
moment with every single part of the creation forever means that if let's say for an example there is a very um, um, talented group of people that decided to make an animation movie let's say for an example Smurfs okay what's Smurfs? Uh, okay, you can, after the class you can google it you're gonna, you're gonna find it in google no, no, it's, it's on, na on national TV, on the, on the, it's a cartoon. So, those guys made that movie, and let's say that one of the children of the world <coughs> is putting play and watching that video, watching that movie, so that movie is rolling, right? So, Hashem Barach is also watching that video, not only with that kid, also with those Smurfs, and it's true. It's animation, and uh, I would say an, 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 animation. An, animation. But still, Hashem Barach is is over there because he's with every detail of the creation, and not only now in the present, just for him, every moment that was now in the creation means every moment that happened since the beginning of creation, since Bereshit. For Hashem Barach, that moment is an eternal moment beyond time. So Hashem Barach is surrounding all worlds and He's inside, He's filling all worlds in the same time together. That's Hashem. It's not Hashem. That's what Hashem is, that's how Hashem Barach is spending the time and the space with us from our side. He's there, He's here. So, that's one thing about Hashem. Now, for every one of us that wants to experience the redemption, the Geula, so we can talk about Geula. We can say that the redemption will be that all of Jewish people will go back to their holy land, that all of the nations will be happy, that they will also believe in God, that they will call Him in His name. What, what, many, many words we can use to describe. But really, the redemption is something that will cover all of what that we just now explained that Hashem Barach is part of. Means that Hashem will bring a new spirit, will purify, will renew every part and part of the creation. And that's going to be the complete redemption. And everyone will feel it in his area in his place so if for an example you have a problem in your house in your mind in your health with your friends with your family when that new spirit when that new light will come and will penetrate will reveal itself into the world so what that will happen is that everyone will feel relief and happy and everything will be organized and suddenly he's going to understand and he's going to remember what that he forgot and everything will be back into track. Everything will be okay. Now let's say that the contractor built your house too close to your neighbor or that he, you can feel the neighbors on the second floor walking on your ceiling 24-7 and, and you ask yourself, why? So in the time of redemption, you will not going to hear them any longer, anymore. It won't bother you anymore. Because Hashem Barak will fix everything. And even if that house is too close to your house and you know that you cannot fix it, yes, you cannot fix it, but when that new spirit of Hashem Barak will come, it will expand everything. It will move everything to its right, right place. And we still need to hold our opinion and our will as the right will, as long as we are wishing for only good things to happen. So if you're losing your mind, why that window is so crooked, bent, and you want to fix it, and there's no way that you can do it, so wait for the redemption and it will be fixed. So it's true, we don't want to wait a lot of time. Also, Hashem and Bob don't want us to wait a lot of time. But, you should remember and know that it will be fixed. That Hashem Bach will make sure that it's going to happen. So, 
The thing is now, how we gonna solve our problem, how we gonna bring the redemption. We must understand that we are not Hashem. We are just a beam of light of Hashem. Every one of us is tiny, is very small, but in 100% connected from inside to Father in Heaven, to the one that is connected to all of the rest, to all the rest of, of the, those beams of light, to all the rest of the souls. He is the life spirit of creation. He's inside the deers, he's inside the, 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 the birds, the, the, the snails, everyone, inside of the creation, inside the leaves. He is the life. He is Chay Chaim. He is life, the life itself. And only a person that is holding himself in his mind, in that understanding that he is willing to experience this moment that he is with Hashem forever, now, no matter which moment, a moment of happiness and also a moment of sorrow, he sees the good in it and his vessels are willing to accept that individual supervision of the Creator on him, to hug that moment and to experience it forever because he knows that it's Hashem, so then that person lives eternal life in this temporary world because he cut himself from the limitation of time. He brought himself to a higher level. He brought himself to be beyond time by connecting himself to the divine will, to the will of Hashem, that Hashem Ibarach wants just to be with you forever. And that's what the Hashem Ibarach is doing. So when you accept that moment with Hashem forever, you being attached to Hashem face to face. That's what it means, panim el panim. Face in face. That your face and the face of Hashem in Barach are one. When? When you are mekabel panim. You accept his face. Let's say that there is a king that is coming, so everyone wants to accept his face. That's how we say. To, to, to receive his face, to see him. What's going to be the result of that? that you are receiving His face. means that His face become to be your face. That your face are redesigned, reshaped, remodeled to become like the clean and bright and great face of the Creator. He's sharing with you His beauty and people that will look at you will see the beauty of the Creator in your face. That's the level of those righteous people that nullify themselves completely to Hashem and accepted on themselves the will of Hashem. One while they were climbing, one while they were going down, it doesn't matter, there is no difference. <coughs> because Hashem, like that we said that He's beyond the time, He's also beyond the place. He's beyond all the physical limitations. So He's beyond everything that is physical in this world. And the mission of this world is also to go out of that shape, to go out of that bubble, from that power of imagination, that it's only an imagination that is separating us from Hashem, because really we are 100% with Him, and only because that He is just 100% with us. Like that tale, that story, that example that I gave once. And I said that to explain to a person the godliness of Hashem, the, the, the existence of Hashem, is like to explain a fish on the existence of water. The fish is in the water tank, in the river, in the ocean, and he's swimming, and he cannot see water. He sees food, he sees oxygen, he feels, sees his friends, he sees many, many things and he's full of lust and desires and, and will and great ideas for the coming up day. But tell him that there is water, he will never going to think about it. Why? Because he is hungry now, because his friend is calling him, because oh, there is a boat and, and things are happening in his life and he must move on, so he doesn't have time to think. But the truth is that all of his life based on the water. 
Yes, he drinks from the water, he eats from the water, he breathes from the water, he leans and moves and do everything he needs by the water. And just take him one moment from the water, that's how you're going to wake him up to realize that there was water in the water tank, in the aquarium. Only if you're going to take him out. So us, we're drinking and breathing and smelling and seeing, it's all Hashem, but well, let's put Hashem aside for a second because I'm hungry, because I am tired. So, but you cannot go to sleep because Hashem, He needs to put you to sleep. And you cannot wake up because Hashem, He is the one that wakes you up. And you cannot make money because Hashem supplies the money. And it's all Hashem, but you can't see it. So, okay. That's why we have the difficulties, by the way. That's why we have all those challenges, all of those threats that are threatening on us. Hey, you're going to lose your life. Hey, you're going to lose your job. Hey, you're going to lose your family. Hey, you're going to lose your health. Why? To wake us up to realize there is water, there is Hashem. And now, oh no, I need Hashem, I need Hashem. And then you start swimming back to that recognition, to that understanding that you need the wisdom that is behind those curtains, that those curtains cannot revive you, cannot give you life. Just you need the source of life to communicate with you, to feed you, to give you, to make you happier, to make you more, more successful. Now, like that today we have our own individual problems and issues, that they are waking us up to know Hashem and to call Hashem and to seek for Hashem and to ask for Hashem and to do whatever it takes to realize how to bring Hashem, to find Hashem, to bring Him back into our lives and it's coming only through those difficulties that we're going through. That's exactly what the Hashem Barach is doing for us with that pure intention to bring the complete redemption finally to the wide world. Why? Because like we said before, you are aware to your circles, and he is aware to his, and she is aware to hers, and everyone is aware to one circle, one aware to 3% of that circle, one is aware to 7% of that circle. Everyone experiences something, and when you need Hashem, you call Hashem, and when you call Hashem, so Hashem is coming and revealing Himself where? In your, into your circles, into your life. And then you have another miracle here, and another wonderful thing that happened just now right here, and another thing that happened, and a phone call, and wow, it's all Hashem, and you start recognizing and seeing Hashem, and then you're sharing with your friend, and that's how the light is expanding, and one circle is touching the other, and both of them are shining to the third, to the fourth, and the circles are expanding and growing. The awareness to the Creator that is hiding Himself inside those particles of creation is being revealed, and it's all being uncovered. And now you can see Hashem, right? So now you owe me. From that moment, you owe me big time. <laughs> but I'm not charging, so it's okay. You can uh, just be happy and uh, have hakarat atov. Gratitude to Hashem Barach that He's using me. Like I told you in the beginning of the class, what am I trying to do? Before the class, I'm trying to be quiet. I'm trying to let Hashem Barach express Himself through me. I'm not trying to convince you and not to take you. I, actually, I don't have enough place in my, in my car. I cannot take you nowhere. I can just tell you and show it to you that Hashem is with you. And now when you found Hashem, you don't need me. If you didn't find Him completely, okay, so I can give you my WhatsApp, my email, we can be in touch next Wednesday. See you, it's great. But you can watch me on Facebook, live, YouTube, Twitter, um, what else? SoundCloud, what else there is? We have everything. All the outlets. What? Dropbox, Dropbox, everything. Yeah. Whatever you want, we have. <laughs> We're doing everything. The thing is that if you haven't completed your faith yet, so okay, you can go and search for more, for more, for more. But the thing that really in the end of it you need to achieve is your own faith. It's your own understanding that Hashem Yitvach is with me, with you, with, with, with every one of us, with, with no connection to the rabbi, to the teacher, to the guy, to what. No, Hashem is with me. Now, how I'm going to remember Him always, and how I'm not going to ignore Him, and how I'm not going to 
contradict him. A person asked me a question today, and I felt like I'm not able to answer to him. So I told him that I, I was able to tell him I don't know the answer to the question that you asked. It's okay. It's better to tell I don't know than to start twisting things and saying, no, look, it's all Hashem, it's all this. No. Why do you just make a mess? Don't make a mess. Say I don't know and walk away because you don't know. So don't lie. So we must bring Hashem into our life. And the way to do it is only based on truth. Only when we are truthful, when we are loyal, when we are right, when we are trying to do the best that we can, to be honest, to do as much as we can, really to understand the truth, then we're bringing a Shemit Barach to our place. <laughs> but when a person is lying, to himself, to his company, to his friends, to his rabbi, to his wife, to, his, uh, to her husband, to Hashem, then in that moment he's rejecting Hashem. He's creating more husks and coverings and curtains to block the light of grace of the Creator. And he cannot sense Him anymore, any longer, because he lied. He lied to himself. He said to himself, no, I can't do it, I won't make it. But it was open for you. You could have succeeded, but you chose not to because that you chose to lie or to follow your fears or to follow your weaknesses or your depression or whatever, your laziness. And you chose wrong. So by doing that, you brought up another curtain and now you covered yourself. You said, no, I'm, a, I'm a, and you said, I'm a liar. I'm lazy. Okay, so now you cannot see a shame. Okay, I'm, I'm too weak for that. Oh, and you covered yourself with another covering, another blanket, another towel, another mask, and, and, and another lie that is blocking the light of Hashem Barach from penetrating between those thin ones that Hashem put in the beginning into you. But in the end of this story, we will all gonna experience that spirit of Hashem. Suddenly, in one moment, and it's going to be one moment. <coughs> it's going to be one moment, and Hashem Yitzvah helped me to see that moment. And in that moment, suddenly there's going to be a, a pure wind that will just come into the world and will blow away all the noise and all the filth and, 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 and all of the coverings that are blocking us from recognizing and seeing the real beauty of Hashem. And suddenly every person will be strong and, and every backyard will be nice and, and blooming and, 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 and colorful and all the animals will, will live in peace and in harmony and everyone will have the right spirit inside of them and the company, the world, the people will, will just live as one group of happy people, shiny happy people in the world, that's exactly what that will happen. Everyone will smile to each other. Everyone will care about each other because they're going to have the same spirit. Let's say now us. We're sitting here together. You're sitting here together. And we have a good spirit between us. We don't have problems between us. We, if let's say now one of us will stand up and say, hey, you know, today I got a, a, a new job, I'm very happy, thank God Hashem helped me, I bought a new car. We're all going to be happy for him. We're going to feel comfortable with the fact that he succeeded. Why? Because there is peace and, and, and love between us and there is nothing. Now. Okay, so I got the new car, there's no, you're not going to be just, oh, wow, he got that car, I wanted it. No, you're not. Why? Because we're sitting in happiness and in joy. We came to learn, we all came with pure intentions, with good heart. We're willing for the good, that's why we came, we joined with that intention, that pure intention is building inside of us, preparing the vessels to be happy with the success of our friend, to make everyone happy, that everyone will be happy, that everyone will grow, will succeed, will get married, will have children, will buy houses, will succeed in everything that they want, will be able to accomplish everything, to, to express their emotions, to be who that they really are, and whatever, that's our... That's the, the place that we're holding now, right? So, I'm holding in that place always, just for you to know, and you're welcome to join me, like, <laughs> that it won't finish here in this class, but, 
That's the level that you should hold. And when you hold that level, that's it. You are not holding the redemption back. You're not stopping Mashiach from coming. When you just want everyone to succeed and that everything will be beautiful and that everyone will be rich and wealthy and healthy and successful and, 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 and whatever. So that's it. You're not blocking the light of Hashem, the light of, 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 of kindness, of grace, of health, of beauty, of good from the world. And that's our job. Only to move ourselves to the sides. That's what Hashem Barach did when He wanted to create the world. If you remember, we spoke about it also in one of our Wednesday classes here. That when Hashem wanted to create the world, so the thing that He did was to remove Himself to the sides. Because the world was full with His existence, with His being, the one spirit of the Creator, the, <coughs> the, the, the endless light of Hashem, the sea of the souls, was covering the universe, was covering everything that was exist. There was nothing and it was awful with him. And then he wanted to reveal his mercy, but there was no way to reveal the mercy because there was no one to receive those mercy. So he had to remove himself to the size and he made an empty space, an empty circle in the center of infinity. Only he can do something like that. And he created the worlds from that central point of that emptiness, so to speak. That's called Halal Patrui, the empty space. And into that central point of darkness, of that empty space, he sent that pure beam of light and started to creating the world and creating Jerusalem and then the Holy Land of Israel and the rest of the world. A whole long description in the Gemara on how Hashem Bach created the world. So, and then the universe, all the other, uh, the, the sky and, and the rest of, of the stars and, and, the, and sun systems and whatever, everything. But the central point was the first stone that is standing in the center <coughs> of the universe, in the holy mountain, in Harabite. That's that, that, that piece of rock, that's the beginning of the worlds. And that's why people are fighting on 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 who gonna who gonna who gonna love it because you just you just need to heal that place too much blood and too, too much coverings too many too many tears that are distracting our thoughts from the love that is shining from that beautiful place it's like today you can't see even if you go and you see you cannot see you really cannot see I I. You see it in pictures, you see the mask over there, you see the stone, even. you cannot see what it really it hides. Because what it hides inside of it is, is, is the secret of creation. And only a clean person that couldn't care less about himself, and he just wants Hashem's light to be revealed, he can see where it's re revealing from, where it's coming from. So. So only Mashiach will, 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 will bring all the people back to Jerusalem to a spiritual experience. That's what's really going to happen. People will follow Mashiach to Jerusalem to see where the light is coming out from. Because he will teach everyone to search for the light. So the desire in the hearts of all of his followers, of all of his believers, all of the ones that will follow him, will be so desiring, so flaming, in flames of, of holy fire, to find Hashem, to know Hashem, to recognize Hashem, not to disturb Hashem, to let Hashem do His thing, that they will have only one thing in mind, and it's to go. And when enemies will come, and when the husks will try to attack, so Mashiach will do only one thing, and he will just only call Hashem. You're going to cry to Hashem, you're going to call Hashem, you're going to talk to Hashem, whatever, whatever, whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Okay, okay now we learn some languages, we're singing together, everything is good. So, that's the power of Mashiach. Mashiach is the letters of the word Messiah. He's talking. He's got that problem that he must talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and you can't stop him. Why? Because he needs to express the glory and the beauty of Hashem. 
So he can't stop praising Hashem because all of the soul is praising Hashem and his soul is, is flaming in fire of holy feelings and emotions. So he must always express that light and to tell everyone, no, but Hashem is with you, but look, and here is Hashem, and here is Hashem. So there are people that will choose to disappear, to run away. They don't, they can't stand that, that for them it's noise. And other people will just join him and, and will enjoy the harmony and the music that comes out of his... It's like fresh, cold water to a tired, weak soul that is a spirit that is... Oh, and suddenly words of, of, of inspiration and words of truth and, and, and words of comfort and... Oh, I can see now and it's clear now and now I can understand and now, oh, now I recognize and that's really a shame. And, Suddenly the puzzle is coming back together and it becomes a bit a big picture and you can, oh, I saw Hashem. Suddenly you, you can visualize, you can see Hashem. So that's the gift that we will all experience through Mashiach when Mashiach will come. And we're expecting that moment to, to happen in every second, in every... Yes, you need to believe it can happen right now. Mamash, now it can happen. Yes, you're the humble one. Exactly. In that moment, suddenly Hashem Ibrach is... Oh, that's it. Hashem chose that day, and Hashem chose that person, and Hashem chose that moment, and Hashem... And that's it. And if really people in that moment will just accept that Mashiach, and they will follow him, it doesn't need to... <coughs> okay, let's start walking. Okay, you ready? Everyone, backpacks, water, everyone took... No, no, it doesn't need to be like that. They built amazing highways here in New York, and you can go on the train, on the bus, and it's easy, and you have the, the, the airplanes today, and, and you can go from, from Kennedy Airport, and from... Uh, La, 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 and it's, uh, you have many options, and everything is great, and... and the redemption will be, like I told you, it will be easy. It will be the solution of your individual problems. When Hashem in Barach will come, when the Master will come in that day and really reveal Himself and will bring that complete redemption to the wide world, what it will happen is that your tiny issues will be solved as well with the rest of the issues of the rest of the people that are surrounding you and surrounding them and surrounding and surrounding the world. Because like we said, you're experiencing a certain section, part of the world, and Hashem Ibrach will answer your prayers to heal that part while He's healing the rest of the world. And the ones that will be fast to pray first, they will be answered first. They will be the ones that will be answered first. So. It's only a matter of time until we will reach that understanding that Hashem Bach is really here with us. Because if, let's say, now I'm going to take this plate and uh, I'm going to tell you, hey, can you make a phone, call my assistant, I really need his help. You're not going to do that. Why are you not going to do that? Because you don't have faith that you can talk through a plate. And I'll tell you, a plastic plate, but I'll tell you that 200 years ago, if you would show a mobile phone to someone else, he would think that you're crazy. He said, come on, what are you talking about? They would stone you, they would kill you on, on being a, a black magician or whatever, because how can you talk with something like, it's, it's a stone, it's a piece of, wow, what's that, is that lithium, what, what, what are you holding in your hand? It, it, it was not realistic to speak through a piece of plastic with some silicon particles in, in it. it, it wouldn't work. But today it works. Why? It's only because that Hashem Barach made a wonder that you today can use something that doesn't have no existence, like plastic, like silicon. It's nothing. And Hashem is taking your voice from one place and bringing it to the other. It's not Apple. It's a scam. Apple, it's a scam. <laughs> That's the Apple. That's the Eve and Adam Apple. It, it's, it's a mistake. It's not it. You need to choose to believe, to see Hashem through that. Today you can ask questions and someone is answering you through Google, through I don't know what. All, you can find all the answers because all the books are already online. You can find all the answers to all your questions. Why? Because Google is amazing? No, because Hashem Ibrahim decided to reveal Himself in a way that will be understandable for people like us. People like us cannot receive prophecies 
and to stay sane and healthy in their mind. If you will now will want to talk to someone in Israel and you gonna say something, hi, how are you? And suddenly you're gonna <laughs> meet him back, you're gonna go lose your mind. That's really what will gonna happen to you. If you're gonna start hearing your friend from Israel talking into your ear, you're gonna flip out, you're gonna lose your mind. Whoa, what's going on? Like you're gonna you you're gonna take yourself to, to a special place, right? <laughs> Why? Because you know that it doesn't work like that. So Hashem Barach made the process of, of technology and developing and being more modern and developing things and creating and inventing things, devices, that through those coverings He's revealing His endless, unlimited light. Aeroplanes. Today in 12 hours you can be in Jerusalem. It's impossible. Really you cannot be in 12 hours in Jerusalem Unless Hashem Barach made you to be Superman, Superwoman, Wonder Woman, Wonder, whatever, you cannot. If you not been chosen by Hashem to take you from one place in the world and in 12 hours to put you in another place, you cannot cross that distance. So yes, the airplanes and the companies and they're making money on our backs, you're right. But that's only because we, our faith is not solid enough, is not stable enough to experience the real wisdom that is hidden behind those curtains. We must enjoy those curtains. You wouldn't eat the sparks that are nurturing you, that gives you life, if they wouldn't be wrapped in food. If you would just see those sparks on the floor, you would never put them into your mouth. You would take pictures of them, you would make selfie <laughs> with them. You would, you would play with that somehow. You wouldn't put it into your mouth. That would be the last thing that you would do. You wouldn't think about it. So Shemit Barak had to put some sugar, some cream on it, some colors, some smells, but that you will relate to it. Why? Because you're also, in a way, physical. So Shemit Barak is using your physicality to reveal his spirituality through. So, when you have needs, when you feel sorrow, when you feel pain, when you feel lost, the thing that you will do is to call Hashem, and you're going to scream to Hashem, and then in that day Hashem will come and will answer your prayers, and it's going to inspire your friends to do the same, and then they will pray the same like you, and they will be answered, because that moment came, that all of the prayers will be answered now, in that moment. You're so crazy, I'm talking and you're not praying, and I'm talking about now, and you're thinking about that day, and I'm talking about now, and you're thinking about that day, that's the problem. I'm talking about now, and you're thinking about that day, and I'm talking about now, and you're still thinking about that day, because if you would have some common sense, you would pray, but you're not, you're sitting in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's right. Pray. That's the only thing that is holding us back from being answered. That we're not calling. You must call Hashem. You want Hashem to come? You need to call Him. You want me to come? You need to call me. <coughs> I cannot come if you're not calling me. And Hashem made that nature in the creation that the world works like that. That if you want Hashem, you need to call Him. And then when you call Him, so He's coming. So we need to build and stabilize the vessels of power of speech of us that in every situation that we need something, we're going to call Hashem. Because what that you need is not that thing. You need the sparks, you need the soul, you need this life spirit of Hashem to feed you, to heal you, to support you, to stabilize you. So for that, Hashem created money, and lawyers, and doctors, and grocery stores, and food, and whatever, trucks, and cars, and, 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 and all the creation, that he will have a way of transportation to give, to bring those sparks to you, that you will enjoy. Think about the huge factory that works day and night to bring cucumbers to your house, to bring whatever you, you, you need. There are factories, there are people that are waking up in the middle of the night and driving their gigantic trucks and, and, and fighting with their wives and arguing with everyone else and driving into the night, going into that yard of that poor farmer 
that worked for the last three months couldn't sleep and everyone were planting and harvesting, watering before and washing the fruits and the vegetables and putting them in boxes and marking them and there were people in, in um, uh, how you call that? Um, like the, the people that were designing the stickers marketing that were, were putting all of their mind and hours into the stickers of that brand of those cucumbers that will go to the market and just that you in the end will take that piece of vegetable and gonna say boy put it out on it and gonna bite it and, and gonna move on with your life and thousands of people are involved in that industry and also ministers and, and in the government seating and, and budgets and water and weather and, and like everything into and the end of it, the bottom line, Hashem did it all that you will be able to take that pickle and say Bore pri adama and that's it <laughs> and that's the end, that's the purpose so how can it be that that's the purpose? like Hashem, what, those guys we cannot understand what it means that Hashem Itbarach is shipping His light to your heart, back to you because when you eat that cucumber, when you eat that fruit, that vegetable, what that is really happening is that sparks of your soul, sparks that are connected to your soul, are making their way back home to your soul, through your soul back to heaven. And it's like sacrificing sacrifices in the holy temple. When you're eating, your table is like the altar. And when you're feeding your mouth, you're actually feeding Hashem because Tzadik Ochel Esovan Afsho, a righteous man, is feeding his spirit. And when you're eating, you're uplifting all of those sparks back to their spiritual source. And by doing that, you fix the worlds. You fix every particle of the creation that you're not aware of. Like we said, how in the world that cucumber came to the creation. We don't know. It's one seed that finds himself going in different lifetimes again and again, being chewed by animals and, and going, you know what's going on with it. And then it comes back to life after another 50 years and another 100 years. And then a certain amount of water that comes, or from the rain, that the, how the rain is coming from the clouds, and the clouds are rather coming from steam that comes from the ocean. Everything is connected. And every boat that sails in the ocean is changing the water and affecting the clouds that are going to affect the rain, that's going to change the cucumber. And only Hashem is inside of all of the creation experiencing it in every moment. And on that explanation, you owe me again. <laughs> but I'm not charging, so everything is good. We're okay now. So, the bottom line, the conclusion, like that that cute cucumber made all of his way to your plate, that you will eat it and gonna enjoy those sparks, also, all of the redemption, the big, huge salvation of the world depends in your individual success, that depends in your faith and understanding that you should call Hashem Barach because of your troubles, because of your sorrow. So the reason of your sorrow is to wake up your soul to call Hashem, and when we all got to call Hashem Barach loud enough in a quality way that will bring Hashem Barach to answer us in that day, that's the purpose of our creation. So what did it mean, and that's the bottom line, that you should not look for salvation in heaven, just you really need to take care of your life. And that's it. And that's how you're completing the creation. Because except of saying Bore Priya Adama on that cucumber, there is nothing else that you can do to show your gratitude to the farmers. There is nothing. You bought their product, that's enough. Trust me, that's what they wanted. They achieved their goal. It's perfect. You can also take a snapshot and send it on your Twitter account. It's great. All your friends amazing brand of new fresh cucumbers, wonderful, you can do that favor, share, it's great. But the real purpose is that just that you're going to enjoy from that cucumber. So also that you're going to enjoy from your own life. 
So if you need to work on certain things, parts in your life that are not organized, that are not settled yet, that's the mission of your life. And you don't need to feel bad with it. Oh, but I'm not learning Torah. Oh, but I'm not davening in a minyan. Oh, but I cannot accomplish this. I'm, not, I'm never going to finish Shas. I'm not going to be the most modest. I'm not going to be the most richest. That's not the purpose. The purpose is that you will achieve completion inside of yourself. That you will feel complete and happy with who that you are means that you should connect yourself to Father in Heaven, that He, from His side, is 100% with you in every moment of your life, in every part of your creation, also in the parts that you're not aware of. And as much as you're going to look for Him, that's how much you're going to find. Because He's close to everyone that calls Him with truth. <coughs> so you just need to call Him and to ask Him, Hashem, where in the world are you in my parnasa, in the issues of money? Where in the world are you, Hashem, in the relationship with my soulmate? Where in the world are you, Hashem, in, Barach, in my health? Where are you? And if you're not going to call Him from your heart, those words will not going to be words of truth that will bring Him into your life. Because He's coming only when you call Him with truth. So. It means that you really need to pay attention to your issues, that you need to work on your self-awareness, to work on yourself to become who that you really are with your pain, with your sorrow, with your feeling of despair, and just to talk about it with Him. Just to take all of who that you really are and to open it up in front of the Creator. And just to talk to him about your life like you talk to your best friend. And when that prayer will be ready, means when your vessels to contain the salvation will be ready, then you will be saved. What does it mean? Like we said before, today if you're going to speak to your friend in Israel and suddenly you're going to hear him talking to you in your mind, you're going to run away from the house. You're going to knock your head to the wall. I hear voices. I hear voices. Why? Because you don't have the vessels to contain it. But through the mobile, through that smartphone, you have the ability to experience that miracle of Hashem. For you now, it's a natural thing. Okay, I can call Him and He will answer. I can Skype, I can FaceTime with Him. Why? Because there is a certain wall, a certain covering that is blocking the light of Hashem, minimizing it into a measure that's not going to hurt you. If you're going to see it in your office and suddenly the face of your friend will start speaking to you from above the table, you're going to lose your mind. We're not able to deal with those kinds of reality, but that is what the Tashem Barak is doing through computers, technology, and all the rest of coverings that the world is supplying to us to cover the light of Hashem, to bring it to a volume, to a level that we can digest, that we can get inside of our existence and to enjoy from it and that it's not going to tear us to pieces, that it's not going to break us, not going to crack our stability. So, when you have pain, when you have sorrow, you just need to open your heart and to talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. And when you will build the vessel that will be enough to contain a miracle, to contain a salvation that's not gonna make you crazy, you will be answered. So the main thing that we should work on is our faith, our trust in Him. Because that is the vessel. Because if I know that it's Him, and I'm now going to see Him, I won't be scared. Like that the righteous people are about to say in the end of time, Ze Hashem lo. That's Hashem that we were waiting for Him. What it means that is Him, Ze Hashem? They recognized Him. How they recognize someone that just revealed Himself? Because they were looking for Him always. And when they saw that police officer, so for them it was not a police officer, it was Hashem. So they recognized Hashem through those eyes of that police officer. 
and they recognize the Hashem with their wives, with their husbands, with their children, with their friends, with whatever. They always saw Hashem. So actually, like I told you before, the face of Hashem is revealing Himself through our faces. And all of our faces together are built in, containing the real divine face of our Father. So when He will reveal Himself in the end of time, then the ones that recognized Him already through the curtains, through those masks, will be able to say, Oh, it's Him. Because when it was that police officer, so for me it was not a police officer, it was Hashem. I knew it was all Hashem. It was not my wife, it was all Hashem. And I was listening to him. I was listening to her. I was listening to the voice of the individual supervision, the very precise, unique voice that Hashem was using to communicate with me, to bring me to that recognition, to that understanding. And when we all, from that point of pain, of sorrow, of confronting our own fears, anxieties, sadnesses, depressions, gonna call Him and gonna be honest enough, pure enough, just to say, Hashem, I'm weak. I'm not able to deal with that darkness. I need your help. I need your support. When we're gonna say that from an innocent, pure heart, we will be answered. And when one is being answered, slowly, slowly, it's pushing the process of the rest of the people also to call Hashem and to be answered. Because by you having miracles, you're going and sharing those wonders and those miracles like you're going to go now. After this class, you're going to share with your friends. I've been to that class. It was amazing. Now another friend will come with you next week to this class. Why? Because you are sharing a voice of truth that you heard in your life and the good inside of you is waking up and the desire to share and to make other people happy like we explained before that here now when we're sitting there is peace between us because every one of us is in a peaceful set of mind we came good in the right, on the right side we came happy we came with a good will we wanted to hear we wanted to learn to receive something good that intention that humility is the vessel to contain the light. And when the light affects you, you become one with Hashem. So you will become one with Hashem. Like that He wanted to share His love with you, to reveal His loving kindness on you, that that's the purpose and the reason of the creation. Now you become to be like Him. And the only thing that you want to do with the knowledge and wisdom that you receive is only to share it and to make other people pleased and happy and, 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 and glad. And you become one with Him, because you're doing exactly what that He did with you. That's gratitude. On that explanation, I'm not the charge, so everything is okay. Bottom line, we just need to believe in ourselves. That who that we are is who that Hashem wants us to be. And you don't need to change, and you don't need to move, and you don't need to act. You just need to let the light of your soul express itself. People with fears, people with low self-image are hating themselves, always blaming themselves. So they think that they are bad. The Yetzirah, the evil inclination, the darkness, are trying all of the time to tell you that you're not part of Hashem. That you are an individual, that you have your desires, that you have your needs. Always trying to make a separation. To divide you from your inner spiritual connection to the rest of the souls. And to divide you physically in your house, with your outfit, with your hair, with your money, with, with your connections, and to separate you from the rest of the world. That's what the Yetzirah is trying to do. Our war is not to listen to his advice and to become external with him, to go on the physical side of our life, and just to listen to the voice of our own soul that is being used by Hashem to communicate with us from inside like the, the verse is saying, Lecha amar libi, bakshu Your heart is calling you always, 
your heart is calling you from inside always to seek, to look for my face, Hashem is saying. Hashem is saying to every one of us, your heart is always calling you to search for me. Your heart is speakers of Hashem. Your soul is that channel that Hashem is using to communicate with you through your own inside, through your inner thoughts. So the main thing that we need to do is hit bodedut, hit bonenut, meditation, do whatever you need to do to find that inner quiet that you will be able to experience your true self, your inner voice, the voice of heaven that is calling you to ask for Him. And when it will be complete, that we're going to want Him with all of our heart, then He will come. The Master of the Universe, the, the, the Creator of the world, will uncover Himself. And we're going to hear the song of the creation, and the trees, and the stones, and the bricks, and the tiles, and the pillars, and the rivers, and the big sea, and the wind, and everything will rise and will stand up to give respect to the king of honor, to the one that, belong, that all the honor and respect belongs to him. And it sounds foul, but it's, it's here and now. And when it will happen, it will happen here and now. In a certain moment that we will just be ready for it, it will happen. And Hashem will be here with us. He's already here with us, just we will have the vessel to see it, to feel it, to sense it, to recognize it, to understand it. We will be clean enough not to fight with it, not to argue, not to reject it, just to accept it. To accept who that we really are, that we are creations of Hashem. Who that you are is Hashem, Hashem's way to express Himself through you. That's who that you are. You are the way that Hashem Barach chose to express Himself through you. And I am who that Hashem Barach chose to express Himself through me. When you take the light of Hashem that got all the colors and all the shades and all the sounds and all the tastes and all of everything, all the good, and you dress it into physical bodies, so it becomes like me and you and you and you and you and them and them and they and everyone, and that's the light of Hashem, the complete face of Hashem, the complete shape of Hashem that expresses itself through us. So the main thing that we all need to do is just to let Him shine through us. You cannot let Him shine through me. If you want, of course you can do it. But it's going to be a second step. As long as you're blocking your inner light, you cannot let me express myself. But only when you have patience for yourself and you start accepting me that you are, now, inside of yourself, suddenly you have another program it been your program been updated and now you can also contain other people as long as you hate yourself and you cannot stand yourself you hate everyone and you talk gossip and nashonara on everyone you can't everyone for you are enemies and haters and and you can't stand people why because you hate everything inside of yourself but when you start accepting yourself and love yourself so what that they are reflecting for you on yourself become to be an option because you already accepted that part inside of yourself so now you have the time for him as well and you can listen to her as well as long as you build yourself your own vessels and that's why I'm saying people are running always to save other people and to invest in other people and to do things for them for the, for the world it's good but the truth is that it's a second step. It's not the beginning. The beginning is to accept ourselves, to let our true selves express itself from inside, to let ourselves be who that we are, even that we have not achieved what that we thought that we were supposed to achieve. You don't know who you are. You still don't know who you are. You still don't understand what your real mission is. Like we said before, 
You don't know how Hashem Barak chose that wave to move that uh, bow to that side and to an effect, the, 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 the steam that went up and changed the clouds. You, you don't understand now you went out from the Beit Midrash and you put that steam back to its place and you don't know how much it affects the world. You don't have a clue how every movement, every action of you as who that you are in the world is changing and completing the creation. And as much good as you're going to be, that's how much good you're going to share and going to bring into the world. And as much as you're going to hide and be upset and angry and frustrated, that's how much you're going to block Shalom, the light of Hashem Barak from expressing itself in the world. So the way of, of healing ourselves from, from being angry and upset and sad is really to take care of, of, of what that we need to take care of, and step by step, and not in a rush, and not in a crazy way. No, okay, so now I need to do tshuva, I must do this. But it doesn't work. I have many scars from those kind of mistakes. I'm carrying those scars with me. My wife, she's carrying those scars with me on our mistakes. It's a mistake. To think as a Baal Tshuva, just open your spiritual eyes. You didn't have a clue. You lived your life like an animal, always desiring and thinking and hungry and feeding yourself. And you were just an animal on two legs and suddenly, okay, from now on, I need to be righteous, I need to be pure, I need to sit and learn. Yesterday, a person came to me and told me I was learning for one year and a half in yeshiva, and every day I was learning all day long, and I was learning, and I think that I made a mistake. I told him why. He said, because I was learning too much, I put too much on myself, and one day, four months ago, I couldn't learn anymore. I had a bad day, and from that day on, I cannot go to shul, I cannot go to learning. So I started to explain to him that it's okay and that he should work on himself and slowly, slowly and to accept his place and his level now and everything is good. And then he asked me, and that's the source, that's the root of the mistake. And he told me, but ideally, in the end, what that I need, like everyone else, is to spend all day long in the Beit Midrash, right? <laughs> so I told him, that's what your rabbi told you. That's not your answer. It may be the answer for your rabbi, I don't know. Maybe there are people that meant to stay all day long in Beit Midrash. But there are other people that must open their stores, that the wife of that Avrech will be able to go and shop. And there are people that needs to work and to be police officers and to be lawyers and to be doctors because also that Avrech will need to buy glasses, right, after a few months of learning Marazu. He needs someone to, to be an eye doctor, to help him, from a priest to something. Okay, we need the world to exist. So it's okay that you're going to be that doctor or that lawyer or that painter that will make that amazing painting that that Avrech will buy to his wife in their anniversary if he will remember from learning so many Gemara and Rashi and Gospel. I wish. So you are important, or at least for his poor wife, you are important. So do that favor for humankind and, and illustrate and paint and sing and dance and, and take care of nature and water your, your, your flowers and your porch and, and really express your true self, the light of your own soul. And don't block the light that Hashem Barach put inside of you. Those are your qualities, your talents, your senses, your will, your desire for life. If you receive it, life, from somewhere, that's where you should receive life from, and it's okay. And if someone else receives it from a different angle, so that's him, and it's completing the creation. So the main and bottom line is just please be okay with who that you are, because that's the will of Hashem. And when you're going to accept yourself, you will find the power to pray for yourselves because you're going to become important for yourself enough to pray for yourself and not only for others. That it's actually impossible because you cannot pray until you get used to pray. You cannot be a master of prayer about Shila if you haven't prayed on yourself a lot, a lot, a lot on your salvation. So it's okay to be who that you are and to take it 
to Avodat Hashem, to serve Hashem with it, with who that you are, with who that Hashem made you to be. And then when you will come to that honest place, really to talk and to pray to Hashem from your heart, He will reveal His light on you, and it will affect all of your beloved ones, all of the circles that are surrounding you, and one drop of rain, and another drop of grace, and another drop of kindness, and love, and peace, and harmony, and all good things that can come from Hashem will water the world, and will heal us all, and, and, and going to protect us all, and going to rebuild us all. Ba'adalach, u'bizman karib, v'nomar, Amen. World in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.